Hello again, ladies and gentlemen, Michael Matt for the Remnant Forum. No, we are not taking the summer off here at Remnant TV. We have just been very, very busy with uh, the Remnant Tour as part of our, our, our apostolate. So we just came back from France with a short pilgrimage, was a great success, and now we're getting ready for the Lake Garda Summer Institute. Dr. John Rouse, great uh, apostolic effort over in Italy, which takes place next week. By the way, I don't know if you noticed, but check out on our website, there are two letters of endorsement, one from Cardinal George Pell and the other from Cardinal Raymond Burke. Uh, endorsing and supporting the really important uh, meeting that Dr. Rao organizes every year over on the shores of Lake Garda in Italy. That's quite a big deal to have two churchmen of that, uh, that caliber, that rank, endorsing uh, a traditional Catholic event that uh, really is beginning to make waves all around the world where they bring a lot of different people, different intellectuals and academics from all around the world together to try to formulate some sort of strategy vis-a-vis uh, -vis the, the present crisis in the church. Uh, we've been carrying a lot of things on our website that I, I hope people are finding useful in terms of dissecting this, this, uh, this very problematic uh, encyclical on the environment. Of course, there are some very good things in the encyclical, but there are also some many, many problems with it. And Christopher Ferrara, myself, Chris Jackson, Elizabeth Yor, a lot of our columnists have been uh, commenting on it. We're going to have another one by Hillary, uh, Hillary White coming up here tomorrow or over the weekend. So please look, for our, look at our website for, for more coverage on that. I'm going to read, if I could, a statement by Elizabeth Yor, our columnist, uh, remnant columnist. Uh, and she, of course, is an international child's rights attorney, and she writes for The Remnant. And with respect to this encyclical, she writes the following. As a member of the Heartland Institute delegation that traveled to Rome to urge the Vatican to reconsider its embrace and adoption of the United Nations Sustainable Development Radical Agenda, Pope Francis's Laudato Si encyclical validates my greatest fears. Throughout the last two years, in preparation for the encyclical rollout, the Vatican has relied solely upon global warming alarmists in its rush to judgment to meet the UN 2015 Sustainable Development Goals timetable. Additionally, during this process, the Vatican consulted primarily with and continues to rely upon radical population control proponents who exploit discredited climate change science to justify their extremist population reduction policies under the nuanced UN Reproductive Sexual Health Rubric. Instead of welcoming our heartfelt disapproval of papal experts who promote policies in direct contravention of Catholic moral teaching, the Vatican authorities mocked and scoffed at our serious and faithful objections by calling us tea partiers and deniers. This callous and flippant response exposed the Vatican's political agenda. The release of the Laudato Si provides the long-awaited moral authority for an immoral and radical UN environmental strategy to reduce the global population through the articulated sustainable development tactics of abortion, sterilization, and other reproductive sexual health services. Ironically, the Vatican has repeatedly expressed hope that the encyclical will be used to promote the UN Sustainable Development Goals in September and the Paris Climate Treaty in November. In January 2015, the administrator of the U.S. Environmental Protection Agency met with high-level Vatican officials to coordinate this encyclical with the Obama administration's environmental regulations and policies. From the beginning stages of this unholy alliance, the Vatican, the Obama administration, and the United Nations have closely coordinated with their biased experts their alarmist message and their radical policies to manufacture a climate crisis in order to promote a new radical world order. The greatest danger to the global environment and survival of mankind is the continued promulgation of worldwide abortion. As we repeatedly warned the Vatican, the Pope's encyclical will be used by the United Nations to continue its global domination of abortion as a means to control the world's population using the false science of global warming and its accompanying alarmist tactics to intimidate, coerce, and entice developing countries to employ policies that reduce fertility of its poor people and abort its children. Notwithstanding standard pro-life language in the document, this encyclical will be cited as the moral platform for the UN 
radical population control movement embedded in the Sustainable Development Goals. This is the new global religion of environmentalism being promoted by the Catholic Church. Signed, Elizabeth Yore, Remnant Columnist. I personally, I, obviously we agree with this. Um, this is a most problematic development in the history of the church. Now it's a question of what do we do? And I believe what we do first and foremost is we pray. Uh, that's really the only, the only thing we can do. Uh, raise awareness of what's, what's happening and then encourage prayer uh, as our strategy, our first primary strategy, uh, prayer and, and fasting, penance. Because let's face it, we are surrounded by demons now. The devils are apparently really calling the shots everywhere. So I want to leave you tonight with a clip, a little video of uh, some interviews and some footage of the Sharp Pilgrimage because I believe that is absolutely the most important thing right, that we can do right now. Put our hands and put, put ourselves in the hands of Our Lady, uh, have total recourse to the Rosary and the traditional Latin Mass, get on our knees, suffer, offer penance and sacrifice for what's happening. And this little video was shot by our dear friends, uh, the Joseph and Francis Czech uh, in New Mexico. They do great work. I think the name of their, their, their production, their up and coming production agency is JMJHF, Jesus, Mary and Joseph, Holy Family Productions. Please, uh, please look them up. They have many other videos. Uh, they're going to be doing, in fact, a nice documentary, a good, good length documentary on this year's Sharp Pilgrimage because, of course, they were with us on the pilgrimage, filming every step of the way. Uh, and so this is a little, a little kind of a sampling of what they're going to be. Their, their, their larger documentary on, the, on the, uh, the Sharp Pilgrimage is going to be. I don't know exactly when it'll be ready, I assume, in another couple of weeks. But anyway, I wanted to thank Joseph and Francis Check for this wonderful little sort of uh, advertisement for Remnant Tours and for the Sharp Pilgrimage. And I hope you'll find this, this video to be encouraging, because uh, I do. I don't really see anything else right now that's very encouraging. The Sharp Pilgrimage is hugely encouraging. Thanks very much, and we'll see you next time. Pilgrimage is something which is designed to make it clear to people in the course of their ordinary lives what the real meaning of life is, which is a movement from our creation to our death and then our eternal destiny. The Sharp Pilgrimage is the most important thing happening, the most important annual event happening in the church today. I have no idea how anyone could deny that. It's also important because it testifies to the strength, the durability, the tenacity and the longevity of the traditional Roman rite. The pilgrimage is in a certain sense a clear vision of what daily life must be. It must be a pilgrimage. For me, it's this experience of, um, of confirming the fact that you're not alone, that you're a community of believers and that you're, you're watched over by the same God and that you're receiving the same graces. It is a big event. It's a happening. It's, you know, when you've got 20,000 people at Chartres Cathedral, it's, it's impressive. It's important for people to be able to pull themselves outside of their ordinary routine, to be able to rediscover what the real meaning of life is. In a certain sense, this is the church militant really marching uh, to display and to spread um, what the apostles were commanded to do. The Sharp Pilgrimage on so many levels uh, it's, is counter-revolutionary. It goes against the revolution of the spirit of Vatican II. It goes against the revolution, liturgical revolution, that is now falling flat on its face. And it goes against the cultural revolution. And the fact that there are, you know, as I say, 80% of young people uh, under the age of 30, uh, which makes it a, a pretty unique event in the life of the church in Western Europe. When, when someone's asked, uh, you know, someone young is asked to do something, oftentimes they, they want to do the most. And if you demand the most of them, they will give. And they will give to a point where they didn't realize they could give so much, but they can. Pilgrimage uh, is the most effective means because what it does is it takes you outside of your normal daily routine. It creates a time outside of time. When you had spent three days struggling with the French and struggling with the German and all the other languages that the pilgrims speak, uh, in the middle of the creed, at unam, sanctam, catholicam, the, the, the whole place erupts uh, and everyone is singing with one voice the ancient creed of the Catholic Church. The Latin unites them all. Suddenly they all speak the same language. For me personally, what, uh, what is most important is the fact that it really 
a pilgrimage creates the experience of the mystical body of Christ. You experience this reality of what is the mystical body. Uh, it, it's not you any longer alone. We must now baptize and convert all these nations back to Christ. That's the job that he gave to the apostles. That's the job that we know, uh, by extension, is our job. And the pilgrimage drives that home. This kind of pilgrimage experience, not only in a negative way, allows you to reflect upon the things that you're not doing, but it, it is a joyful experience. It is a joyful experience. It's a communal experience. It really makes you want to develop whatever virtues you do have to be able to aid in the whole um, a movement of the body of Christ towards its, its destiny. Start Pilgrimage is, is a beautiful and powerful event and more important, it's the most important thing I think uh, for all of us to support. Really, if you want to make a difference, understand something about the Shard Pilgrimage, come and walk the Shard Pilgrimage, support it financially, support the young people who are trying to come from the States, uh, and, and recognize it as, as simply the most important uh, Catholic counter-revolutionary event happening in the Church today. It's not something you ever leave behind. It's something that, that goes with you, uh, continues with you, and oftentimes brings us back to, to do it again.